friends and welcome back to my channel. Today is Saturday, August the 25th, and I'm back in my apartment in New Jersey. Um, I did stay with Jill and her family uh, for about 10 days, uh, helping with our new baby Ife and helping with Issa, and I really enjoyed it. Oh, I am so blessed. Uh, I just thank the good Lord for, for such wonderful blessings uh, that he has given me a beautiful, loving daughter a beautiful, loving uh, son-in-law, and a grandson, Issa, and now my new little granddaughter, Ife. But when I had to rush out of here Sunday, August the 12th, y'all remember I was making a pot of red beans. Well, I just uh, threw them in the freezer, pot and everything, that day, and, and left because Jill had called and said she was starting her labor. So um, I have thawed them out, and uh, I put them in the oven on 300, and I just let them cook some more all day today. And here they are. Uh, they are ready to eat. And I did taste of them, and they are delicious. Um, let's see, where's the spoon? Here they are. They are uh, do have a good bit of juice in them, but that's okay with me. I don't mind having a lot of juice. But I'm going to make some um, pepper spicy cornbread. I'm not calling it Mexican cornbread, mainly because I don't have any corn to go in it. But um, if you wanted to make it Mexican, you would just add a can of cream corn or just throw in a, a cup of um, uh, frozen corn kernels. So let's just make some spicy cornbread. Y'all know I don't usually measure anything, so um, we have to just kind of try to figure it out. So we want to start out with one cup of our yellow, plain yellow cornmeal. This is Quaker. Uh, it does come in, in the round Quaker box, just like a, a box, a Quaker box of oatmeal. So we're going to have one cup of plain yellow cornmeal, one cup of all-purpose white flour, and then we want a tablespoon of sugar. Just want to sweeten it up a little bit. Here's our tablespoon of sugar. And then we want two teaspoons of um, baking powder. Since we are using plain flour and plain cornmeal, uh, we do want, want it to rise a little bit. So that's two teaspoons baking powder. And uh, we're going to use um, one teaspoon salt. And then I'm just going to add a couple of shakes of the Tony Chasseries. I'm not even going to measure it. Just a couple of shakes of that. And then I'm just going to shake in a little chili powder because we do want it kind of spicy. I mean, if you were to measure it, maybe an eighth of a teaspoon. And this is just a little bit of grand cumin. Uh, we're just spicing it up a little bit. And a little black pepper. So let's just kind of mix this together and uh, to this we want to add two eggs so I really enjoyed my time with uh, the new baby um, she is precious um, as far as I can tell I, I don't think she looks anything like Issa uh, but I'm sure her looks are going to change, you know, pretty rapidly because the babies do change a lot. So we're just going to stir up the eggs a little bit. And then, um, you know, I don't usually measure anything, but I will attempt to measure the milk. Let's start out with one cup of um, white milk. So we're going to pour that in. And if we need to add more, we can. It's not a big deal. But I reckon everybody's summer is starting to wind down and all of you moms and dads are with young children. I guess you're getting, um, doing all your back to school shopping and getting the clothes and all the school supplies and everything. Uh, when I was raising my children, it, I used to get panic attacks. It was just um, so much stress on me. 
mainly because my husband was an alcoholic and and I had all of that stress on top of um, buying back to school clothes and being short on money and everything. But we survived. We, we managed and everybody went back to school happy. And um, So we're going to add, um, I got some jalapeno peppers out of Jill's garden. I've already cut up two. So we're going to add uh, the two jalapeno peppers. I got a red chili out of her garden. And I'm going to add a half of a bell pepper. And then this is just one small onion that I chopped. So let's add these um, vegetables in here. Uh, you can add a whole bell pepper. It's just, you know, your preference if, if you like bell pepper. I'm not a big bell pepper fan. <laughs> so um, I'm not going to add a lot of bell pepper to it. So let's uh, blend all that together. And y'all know that my secret ingredient is uh, Lee and Perrin's uh, Worcestershire sauce. So we're just going to put a couple of shakes of that. And of course you can't cook anything in Glenda's Southern Kitchen without adding Tabasco sauce. So a few shakes of Tabasco. So let's just blend all this up. Now I'm going to add a fourth of a cup of um, vegetable oil. Add this in. Now I'm going to be baking it in my large cast iron skillet, which I've added a little bit of oil in there. Um, and what I want to do is get it hot. So I, I just turn the fire on underneath the skillet while I just kind of mix up everything here. Okay, now I have some um, finely shredded short cheddar cheese. So we want to add a cup of the short cheddar cheese. And um, this, this cornbread always turns out so good and cheesy and delicious. So we're just going to dump the cheese into the batter. Get all of that good cheese out of there. So let's just mix it all up here so it's nice and thick. Now you can, um, you know, if you wanted to, you can, um, you know, fry up a little bacon and, and crumble the bacon in here. And you could even saute your peppers and onions in that bacon grease. But I'm out of bacon because when I got back from Jill's, I had forgotten to freeze my bacon and, um, and it was bad, so I had to throw it away this morning. So I'm just waiting on the, the oil to get hot. And I'll tell y'all another um, Dr. Searroyd story. Now, Dr. Searroyd, um, he had bought a home on, on the river there in, in a town south of here. And it was a beautiful home. I have described it to y'all before. It was actually... Um, you know, constructed as a two-family home because uh, it had a kitchen downstairs, a, a great room. It had three, uh, two bedrooms and two baths and a master bedroom with a bath. Uh, and, and then it had all of those amenities upstairs also. So it was quite a big house for me to have to clean in addition to, you know, being the nanny and taking care of the children and doing all the grocery shopping and the cooking and cleaning and um, it had just gotten so stressful for me. Um, and I was, I had just started having to take uh, blood pressure medicine. So I was having a lot of problems with my blood pressure and, and getting the medicine regulated and everything. And um, so I think this grease is hot. Not quite. But I, I, I just started going downhill fast. It, it just got to be so much stress for me. So one day I was in uh, Dr. Searroy's bedroom, cleaning his room and changing his sheets and everything. And uh, there were some stuff, his watch and a couple of things laying out on top of his nightstand. So I opened up his nightstand drawer to, you know, put everything back in there where it belonged, y'all. And there was a bottle full of Oxycontin. And y'all know that I am a recovering drug addict. So, um... 
Let's stop for a second with Dr. Searoid, and um, we're going to go ahead and put this cornbread, this cornmeal in the hot grease. And we do want the grease to be good and hot because you want the, the bottom of your cornmeal to be good and crispy. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'll just take the cheddar cheese and I want to sprinkle some cheddar cheese on top of this uh, cornmeal mixture before I put it in the hot oven. Because you can never have too much cheese, can you? <laughs> and this is just regular um, sharp cheddar cheese, but I know they have tons of all different kinds of cheese nowadays. They have the Mexican blend and spice blend and pepper jack, so just put whatever kind of cheese you prefer on top of your cornbread. So we're going to put it in the oven for about 20 minutes. And the oven is set at 450 degrees. So here we go. And then I will be back in 20 minutes to take that out of the oven and, and see what it tastes like. But in the meantime, I'll finish telling you the story about the Oxycontin. So, so y'all know that I've talked about my drug, getting addicted to prescription drugs after my son Jeremy was killed in a car crash. Um, I got addicted to Valium and Xanax. Um, I mean, the doctors were happy to hand that out to me, those prescriptions out to me like candy. And I, I wanted my emotions numbed. Um, you know, Jeremy was my favorite child, and uh, it's okay for me to say that because he was Jason's favorite brother and Jill's favorite brother, so uh, they understand what I mean by Jeremy being, he was our favorite. So it, it was a tremendous loss um, when he was killed by a drunk driver. And, uh, and then uh, I ended up getting in a bad car crash myself, and and then I got addicted to uh, Percocet and, and then Oxycontin. So when I found that bottle of Oxycontin in Dr. Steroid's um, nightstand, y'all, I was off to the races. Forget it. I mean, I took, I don't know how many I took that day. And, and I did steal the bottle of Oxycontin. I mean, once, once you relapse, you know, it's like um, an alcoholic taking a, a drink you know, they can't drink just one beer. They're, they're off to the races, and that's what I was. Well, that, that particular evening, I had cooked dinner, and um, so Dr. Searoid, he wouldn't let me feed the children when they were hungry. They had to wait uh, until he got home from the office, and sometimes that would be 9, 10 o'clock at night. Um, you know, he would, he would get up in the mornings and go to the gym and work out and then come home and cook breakfast and and get on his computer and he wouldn't even go into his office until noon and um and so then that made for a very late evening and a late night for me and y'all I was just at my wits end I just couldn't take it anymore so um you know I thought well I'll just take a couple of these oxycontins and it'll help me get through well that evening at the dinner table y'all um Dr. Searward would sit on one side uh, with with his son and then on the other side, the daughter would sit, and they always wanted me, I was at the head of the table. I reckon because it was easy for me to get up and, you know, refill their tea and, and um, get them the refills of the food and everything that they wanted. Well, I was sitting there, y'all, and I just went to sleep. I just, I just tilted over like this and just fell flat out on the floor. And I don't remember a thing until I woke up the next morning Dr. Steroid had picked me up and put, took me downstairs and put me in my bed. And uh, when I woke up the next morning, I still had the clothes on that I had, that I had passed out in that night. So then I had to go and face Dr. Steroid that morning, and it, it was awful. Um, anyway, we're going to let this cornbread cook, and then we're going to come back with a finished product, and then I'll tell you the end of the, 
the drug relapse story. And y'all just come on back, okay? Bye.